talking about the things that matter most to you, Catholic Women Now. Good morning. Welcome to Catholic Women Now. I'm Julie Nelson. Good morning. I'm Chris Magruder. Welcome to the Red Checkered Coffee Table, where we sit and chat with our guests. It's going to be another good morning, Julie. It is. I'm excited about our guests. Speaking of guests, we have Kelly Broche joining us today. She is the founder of the Red Bird Ministries, which is a uh, grief support ministry for couples who have lost a child at any age, you know, miscarriage, infant loss through adult. Mm -hmm. And uh, her story is fascinating. And when I've been reading about her and researching this before the show, it was really interesting to me to know that this is filling a great need and gap that we don't realize is needed in our church today. So I'm excited to hear about how it has expanded, what they're doing, how the stories and how they're how they're doing this. And they're doing it with diocese as well, too, now. Yes, it's a Catholic ministry. We'll speak specifically about why is it Catholic? You yes, know I mean? why yes. Why is it Catholic? Understanding so. the complementary role of man and women and just the human human grieving yeah, that we go through. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's start with a prayer. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So just to introduce our guest, Kelly Bro, just a little bit about her. She is a published author and expert in the field of child loss, grief, as the president of Redbird Ministries, she's married to Ryan for 22 years, and the bros have had over 18 years of experience in dealing with grief, having suffered four personal losses, including two after birth and two in utero. Kelly has worked exclusively with the lost community for six and a half years, serving over 500 families personally and thousands through the programming and developed by Redbird Ministries. Kelly has authored several books for the ministry, but is most proud of her memoir, Hiding in the Upper Room, How the Catholic Sacraments Healed Me from the Grief of Child Loss, and it's available at the Red Ministries online gift shop. Welcome, Callie, to Catholic Woman Now. Thanks for joining us. Well, it's great to be here with you guys. Want to make sure you have your coffee or tea at the coffee table with us. Yes. Pull up a chair. Sit comfortably. (laughs) (laughs) So tell us, what is Redbird Ministries? Yeah, so we started Redbird Ministries in 2018 in our diocese after three of our four losses um, because there was not support in the community. And so after the funeral, um, because the church was very good for us, you know, during that time, they were super supportive. But when everybody went back to work, when that when the shock kind of wore off and we were left with making sense of the reality of what had happened, we really needed a community of support from both peers and professionals. And that was not available in our community within our church. So we did what any other family did, and we sought um, healing in the secular world. And at the time, I I really didn't know um, how important it was that the church be present during this healing process because it was very fragmented. So we looked at things very, you know, separately, uh, the psychological component of it, the emotional component, how it affects the relational, but then there never really was a bridge that, that was built towards the spiritual side of healing within this, this lens of, um, losing a child, um, you know, losing a child doesn't make sense without our Catholic faith because um, it's outside the natural order of death. And so I really struggled with a lot of very dark emotions. Um, I had flashbacks of the coffins at my church parish and um, was away from the church for about five years mm. um, while I tried to process this all, of course, in the context without God. Um, and it was actually through the invitation of another mother of loss that I, that experienced a loss, um, you know, several years after our, our second loss, um, we lost our 15 day day old son and, um, at, uh, 2005 and Talon was only 15 days old and his twin sister, actually, she died, uh, in 2009, one month shy of her fourth birthday. 
And so for about seven years, I really struggled with all, um, with everything that I had shared before, but for the first time in 2015, someone invited me back to my faith and I made my Curcio and it was through the sacraments that I came, um, back to the church and found the healing that, um, I'm now trying to bring awareness to the importance that the church be present in these families' lives because, um, like I said, it doesn't make sense without God. Kelly, can I ask you, you say the sacraments, can you be a little bit more specific about, you know, was it just grace that came in the reception of reconciliation, um, the Eucharist? Can you, can you go a little further with that for us? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I was away for the, from the church for about five years. So therefore I didn't know it at the time, but I was in mortal sin. And so I didn't have the grace or the ability to pick up the cross that was in my life. Um, through the invitation of a friend. So through a peer, um, that had lost a child, um, I had not made my confirmation. And so therefore, um, I, I needed the grace of confirmation to be able to, to bring me to the point of like really exploring what this brokenness had done in my life. And I didn't, I didn't know this because, um, like I said, I was away from the church, but also to, I think just from not really knowing really truly who God is, you know, I knew who he was, but not, uh, I didn't have a personal relationship with him. And therefore, um, I suffered a lot from, from that lack of knowledge. So by a friend inviting me back into my faith, I was, I, I started to explore that. And the first step was confirmation. So joining our CIA, making my confirmation as an adult, um, that involved going to confession. It was part of the process had been to confession in over 15 years, mm. It was really a breakthrough in my life. And then um, the invitation into Curcio. And it was there during my Curcio weekend where I really met the person of Christ. Um, and it's infused. I don't know if you guys are familiar if Iowa has a, you know, a big, strong Curcio movement, but it is, it's very strong down in Louisiana. And um it's infused with sacraments. So you go to mass every day, there's, op, you know, opportunities for confession. There's people who are sharing their stories. So there's so there's, you know, there's vulnerability. People are saying, you know, like I was here too. And, you know, this is, this is what I did. Like, this is my, this was my journey. And, um, you know, that just that invitation to, to let go of the walls and the obstacles and let God in um, we talk about the sacraments, like sometimes, like, you know, if you're not in sanctifying grace, it's like the grace is pouring on you. And it's like this, an, this umbrella that's not, that's, you know, it's going around you. I, that's what I did for so long. I had this umbrella that was up and I was not letting the well, grace. So, so for our sacraments. listeners in the Des Moines area, Curcio is, bo- um, is, is similar to Christ Renews' News's parish or chirp or welcome. Okay. Um, so we have something that was actually born out of the Curcio movement. It's a little bit shorter, but friends, that's kind of similar to what she would be talking about right now. We are going to take a quick break, Kelly, because we've bumped up against the clock here. But when you come back, listeners, we are going to hear more about Redbird Ministries with Kelly Brew. Um, you are listening to Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio. We will be back in a moment. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now, where we are speaking with Kelly Bro. She is the founder of Redbird Ministries, a ministry that helps grieving families cope with loss of a child. And so right before the break, Kelly was talking about her own personal experience finding community on a Curcio weekend. And Kelly, now you are creating community for these families who are grieving. As you said, you know, after the funeral's over, after people have gone on with their lives, there's this period where... There's a sense of, you know, they got, they're coping with loss, they're in grief, they're suffering, and who's there for them. So tell us a little bit how Redbird Ministries starts to address that, because you're very virtual, too. Yeah, so um, after I made my Curcio, I realized the value of community and how important it was, because I was not 
in a state of mind after we lost our children to be able to advocate for the things that I needed. And, you know, when we're in a state of desolation, a lot of times we cannot um, make sense of, of, of what's going on. So having people to, to be able to speak truth, you know, to the lies that we're believing, you know, the questions of is, if God is good, if he loves us, those were things that like really controlled and like really imprisoned me within my own heart and in my own home. And so having that community to be able to walk with me through um, through processing what happened and kind of, you know, taking a step back and looking and seeing like what, you know, what did God do during that time um, to, to have conversations with people who, you know, had experienced suffering to, to have these conversations was very important. And so bringing people into community is, is very important. And that's exactly what Redbird is trying to do. We're trying to partner with peers and professionals to be able to provide a holistic experience for families, um, to be able to find that that healing that is exactly what they need. I feel like my experience was like the hard way because it was so fragmented um, and I had to kind of piece together and make sense out of it. But what we're trying to do is bring all the professionals spiritual directors, counselors, peers, our priests with the sacraments to be able to help families to really experience healing like Christ uh, desires for us and um, to stop living in that survival mentality. I feel like that I um, lived for so long and actually um, began to thrive again. Redbird Ministries um, does this with three pathways. Um we have to, you know, evaluate the, the, the family's readiness of what, you know, they're ready for. If it's, um, you know, if they're not ready for in person, um, cause we really, um, see that first like 90, uh, 90 days, three months to six months that it's really hard for people to be in support group. Sometimes our first referral is to support group, but, but that's, that's not really good for families. Um, one-on-one is really good. Um, we do comfort calls through our, our ministry. Our, uh, you can book it online. Um, we do spiritual direction. Both of our, our leaders are um, also mothers of loss. We have virtual components, which is like our podcasts, our blogs. We have downloads, like, you know, families can read and journal. Um, we have path, the pathway from the parish, which we call the institutional pathway, where we have programming that we train leaders to be able to facilitate in their communities to provide that in-person experience, which we know is the, the way that God has called us to heal. The word reconciliation is eyelash to eyelash. So that's not through Zoom. That's not these virtual components. But that is always amazing whenever you're you're just not ready when that seems too intimidating and overwhelming it seems it seems like you guys offer so many options and i love the fact that yes you have one-on-one counseling you have group counseling you have workshops for couples things for just women you have Mm -hmm. the study groups and you have clergy training yeah that's beautiful yeah and I was bringing just, it all together. What I was impressed with too is that you have virtual opportunities to sign up with other people and go through, you know, find your find your people a little bit online and go through this. And you, like you said earlier, you keep your group small so that you have that that trust and that um, a level of vulnerability. Yeah, it's beautiful. So um, what I'm what I'm hearing is. You know, through the the Catholic Church specifically, and with the clergy being trained, and you know, and the the graces of the sacraments, we get this strength from the Eucharist, from reconciliation, from things the sacrament like of confirmation, like you received, where you're getting you know um, strengthened with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Then you've got all these people around you, the community, whether it's you know professionals, um, uh, spiritual help, the clergy's help. I mean, it's amazing how you bring all this together. I'm, I'm guessing you see a lot of healing. Uh, I'm betting you have a lot of testimonies from people um, with, with the incredible healing that you're seeing. Yes, we've, you know, we hear almost every day that Redbird saved um, their life. These families that, you know, are write, writing in specifically, they say that and then they say all kind of other things too about how we were an instrument of helping 
um, to deepen their relationship with God. But we, I mean, it's nothing that Ryan and I do is, you know, we can't heal people. It's Jesus that heals people. Mm -hmm. But um, we believe that our wounds are portals for people to pass through. If we are are vulnerable and allow people to, to experience this healing together as a community, it really opens their hearts to really see Jesus as healer. Um, But like Maurice, he told Therese, she said, is it not Jesus you seek? And she said, yes. He said, yes, it is Jesus I seek, but I saw him in you and he was more approachable. And I think that's what a lot of people need. They need, they they need witnesses who are further along to be able to, to guide them through just the brokenness of, of loss. For a lot of people, it's the first time they ever question their faith. We are his hands and feet. We're our hands and feet. And you know what? When you hear someone else who's further on the path, it just gives you so much hope because you can fall into that despair and even depression and and that spiritual desolation. And like, you just don't know, is this going to, where's this going to end? But to see that there's hope and there's a pathway to healing, a pathway with others. And like you said, you know, Christ is revealed in each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Kelly, we're got to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about your ministry, a little bit more maybe about the name, why you, they got the name, the Red Bird Ministries, and maybe a little bit more about some how you work with parishes individually and, and, and bring them online with what you're doing. You're listening to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio, and we'll be back after this short break. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio, where we are joined today with um, Kelly Bro as our guest. She is the founder of Red Bird Ministries. It's a ministry helping uh, parents um, grieve and go through uh, child loss. So, Kelly, we have to know why is it called Red Bird Ministries? Yeah, it's a quick story. My friend that brought me back to, uh, to my faith, um, a musician, local musician. Um, wrote about five important losses that she had experienced that made an impact on her life. And Isley was one of them. That was my friend's daughter. And she called the song, the red bird flies. And in the song, it says, every time I see the red bird fly, I think of you. And so it is that, you know, that age old, um, understanding that, you know, when we see a red bird, that we remember our loved ones who were gone. Specifically cardinals. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Specifically yeah. Cardinals. Yeah. I've heard stories. Of <laughs> and that's a like real it. thing. It I've is. Had I've that had experience. It's happened to my uh-huh. sister when yeah. my mom died. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's real. Yeah. Well, Callie, we want to get into it. You're the only Catholic ministry out there that is working with um, grieving cu- couples and uh, child loss. So I, how do you bring the Catholic understanding of suffering into this understanding of grief and walking through this, these questions of why God? Yeah, so a big confusion for for me in my own journey was how sin and suffering entered the world and, you know, permissive will and actual will of God. And so that made a significant impact on, on my life. And so our retreats and our workshops really start with that, what the church teaches about suffering. Uh, we start in the garden and we, you know, we talk about how it was not a part of God's original plan. Because if someone believes that God willed their child to die, that really breaks relationship. Um, And it really doesn't share the goodness of our God. So we start there and just helping our families to understand like what, what it really, um, what we really believe as the church. And we lead them through that Paschal mystery, but some just glory stories that I've had in um, after retreat and just walking through that weekend with them. Um, One uh, mom of law said it was the first time since my loss where I felt completely understood and supported the graces of the sacraments blessed our retreat in so many ways that made the weekend so beautiful and holy. I'm grateful for the women who share their testimonies and how they run to Jesus in the wake of sorrow rather than run away. I left full of hope and feeling lighter, knowing the Lord carries me. You know what? The thing that I keep hearing, I feel like it's been kind of, the Lord keeps showing me this and has for probably the last six months, the importance and the power of grace. And what is grace? You know what I mean? And I would say, 
it's that strength he gives us. And I think we don't all fully understand what grace is. But friends, if you are not Catholic, I'm just speaking to you right now. I feel like the Holy Spirit's telling me to speak to you. The graces that we get from the sacraments that are in the Catholic Church are so powerful. And you can't know them until you've experienced them, really. Um, and, and that's, I think, what we're talking about is just all of a sudden you'll have this the grace to move through something or to lean into something in a way that you just couldn't before. You don't know why, but all of a sudden now you can. I mean, there's just so much power when you've received Jesus in the Eucharist or you've received healing from him in reconciliation. No, we don't see his physical face, but we feel him. And it's, it's just, and sometimes you don't physically feel him, of course, but you feel him because you are different once you've received those graces. And um, I, that's what I'm really hearing through Redbird, the power of the graces that come through the church, through your ministry. It's beautiful. Absolutely. And there's always an invitation on retreat and at the couples workshop to, um, to take advantage of everything that the church offers, you know, reconciliation, the Eucharist. We receive the whole of heaven when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist. It is where the veil is the thinnest. You know, it's where we get to pray with our loved ones who are in heaven. It's, it's there. I think for me, I tried to run away from, I thought I was mad at God. It was like, he broke my heart and I'm not going to let him fix it. So I ran away from the church. And then I learned that when we receive the Eucharist, we receive heaven. Mm -hmm. So we should run to the Eucharist. Like our life depends on it because it does. (laughs) I think um, kind of a, a, a minor point to all that too, is when you start in the garden, it opens up this understanding that God always has loved us. It wasn't that he's a punishing God. It wasn't like a God that he just looked away for a little bit and this happened. But it was something that he never desired that for you, and he still doesn't desire that for you. And, that, of course, that's why Jesus came to to uh, take those sins and to help us through and suffered for us as, so, as well. And I think that's, that's um, because you feel alone in this, and you feel forgotten. And to receive that understanding and to receive through the graces of the sacrament, right? It ultimately goes to that, that I am loved, I am seen, and I am known by God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of the things, this is, this is kind of an aside, Kelly. One of the things that I've heard people talk about when they lose their children, um, that one of the blessings that comes from that is you have these children, these saints in heaven, praying for you and your family, um, not that that's an excuse why God allows miscarriage and that kind of thing, but but that's the blessing of that mm-hmm. is you have these saints in heaven. Have you felt that yourself? Oh, absolutely. Um, I always say like our our little babies are the forgotten saints. Um, we have personal intercessors. We pray every day to our children and ask them, I'm like, I know Jesus is busy, but mom needs help. <laughs> and they, I mean, they are our ladder to heaven. I believe, you know, their little short, beautiful life is, is, you know, praying for their family to get to heaven. They, you know, they are so, they're a part of our family. They'll never, mm-hmm. ever, um, you know, they'll never stop praying for us to, to be with Jesus. I, so I, just, we, oh. I have this image of them like reaching down from heaven through the veil, just holding your hands, getting mm-hmm. ready to pull mm-hmm. you guys up. And, and as you were talking about that, I was getting God bumps all over. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. very special. Yeah. Well, we, um, we're getting close here to the end. So Kelly Bro from Redbird Ministries, thank you for joining us. Can you just give out your website before we, we cl- conclude the show here, how people can get it, find more? Yeah, so you can connect with us on www.redbird.love, L-O-V-E, and you can also download our app on the App Store, either on Google or the iOS App Store. Um, Yeah, and so we'd love to be able to support you wherever you are on your journey. Well, thank you so much, and just continue to keep up that good work for Jesus, and be assured of our prayers for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly. God bless you. Should we close in prayer? Bless. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good, good oh, Jesus, we just thank you for your love, your mercy, but your beautiful caretaking of us, especially in those times of need. And Lord Jesus, we just ask that you come and comfort all those who are listening today who have suffered a loss of a child. Their hearts are aching, they're suffering, and just fill them with the hope of knowing that there is hope 
and help out there for them. And the Redbird Ministries walks with them. And Mother Mary, we just know you're up there rocking all those little babies and ministering to all the children, um, whether young, in utero, um, older adult children who have who have gone um, the loss. And uh, just know that you're there comforting them and that, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for the communion of that someday all being together in heaven. And when we just lift this all up to you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now go do impossible things with God. Today's Catholic Women. On The Voice for Catholic Women Now. Iowa Catholic Radio. Now.